into my How a Motorcycle Works series. Don't forget to grab some stickers from the description box and hit that subscribe button. Now, let's talk about motorcycles. As we all know, cars have alternators, but why don't motorcycles? Well, they pretty much do. They have a component called a stator. A stator is really just the stationary part of an alternator. An alternator would be inconvenient considering it adds weight and needs a charged battery to function. The stator is usually located on the side of the engine. It is essentially a circular disc with various numbers of spokes populating the outer edges, as few as four or sometimes as many as 18. The spokes are iron cored and wrapped in enameled copper wire, also known as magnet wire. The second part of the stator is the flywheel, or magnet rotor. This wheel is attached to the crankshaft and has permanent magnets fixed to it. As the flywheel spins, the magnets glide past the spokes, causing them to emit a small burst of electricity, which is used to power your motorcycle. Most stator setups also have what is called a pickup coil. This coil is usually mounted separately and is used to read bumps on the flywheel. The bumps provide crankshaft positioning input and allows for spark timing to be calculated. The electrical details of why all of this happens is a little too involved for our purposes. After the stator and flywheel do their magical dance of magnetism and electricity, an alternating current is produced. This current is fine if you are using it to power your ignition system, but if you want to charge a battery or power lights on your bike, you're going to want direct current. The rectifier on a motorcycle is a clever little contraption that converts the AC to DC and sends it to charge the battery or power your lights and components. This brings us to the last part, the regulator. Oops, not those regulators. The regulator simply keeps the voltage created by the stator from going above the required limit needed to power a 12 volt battery. This is usually 13.8 to 14.5 volts. Without it, your battery and components would quickly be fried and rendered useless. I hope you have learned a thing or two about your motorcycle. If you are curious about anything further, drop a comment and let me know. Don't forget to like and comment. Also, subscribe for weekly moto vlogs and weekly videos about how a motorcycle works. Stay safe out there, and I will see you in the next one.